Welcome all. Um, here I have Daniel and Surya with me on how to improve your diet and save money with Python. Give them some applause. Um, hi, everyone. Um, my name is Luria, he is Daniel. We are both students from the University of Alicante and we are both um, chemical engineering students. So we're not programmers. So if you see something in a code, feel free to send a pull request to the top. Um, that's another thing. You can find um, all documentation and notebooks in or GitHub, which I will post on Twitter later. Um, something about us. Um, we are both active members of Kachema, which is a non-profit organization by our university. And, well, something maybe about your personalities. He is in love with interactive widgets and he loves them. I actually don't like them so much. <laughs> and well, we are programming science 2014, so we are beginners in this. And something about the talk. Um, we are chemical engineers and we love reactors and distillation columns. But I don't think you are much chemical engineers, so maybe this will not be interesting for you. So we were thinking, what is everything every one of us eats? And well, every one of us wants to eat the most, but pay the minimum of money. So, but all of us have the objective, now it's summer, so we all want to fit and be healthy. So we are going to show you how you can optimize your food with a minimum cost, but having the nutritional concerns that you want to have. And well, now I'm going to let you with Daniel, who's going to tell you something more about the theory of this optimization problem. Thank you, Sabrina. Uh, there are no interactive widgets here, so don't be afraid. Um, optimization deals uh, with find a minimum or a maximum or zeros of a given function, and we're going to see some concepts using the diet problem. Uh, this problem was announced in the early uh, 40s when the U.S. Army uh, wanted to minimize the cost of food and give their soldiers a um, balanced diet. Uh, to understand this is better, I give you a, an example. Imagine we move the problem, uh, the diet problem, to the present time. Um, at this date, it is uh, common go to a fast food establishment to, um, uh, to, to, to eat and eat, uh, and we want a cheaper uh, meat and, of course, we want a healthy meal. So this is uh, our problem. Uh, when you go to this restaurant, you can choose some products like fries, like hamburgers, and this is our variable, naming as x in our mathematical problem. Uh, you know, uh, each product has a price, and the total price is the um, uh, multiplication of all coefficients by this variable, and later the summation of all of them is our uh, final cost. Now, what we want to do is minimize this cost subject to a uh, constraints and nutritional constraints. So this is our mathematical problem and we are going to optimize this using uh, Python. But first, uh, we have to see some concepts about uh, of optimization. And I was my professor from me at the very beginning and I'm going to show you in 10 minutes. So first, what is a linear function and a nonlinear function? As you can see here, this is a linear function. It's clear, it's a line, yes. And, well, this is a nonlinear function. You see, it's not a lane. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you, can perform the, you can perform this in three dimensions. This is a plane, and a nonlinear function looks uh, like this in three dimensions. 
<laughs> well, uh, smooth versus non-smooth. Uh, if you have something like this, uh, this is a function where you can uh, calculate the tangent in all uh, the points of its domain. So this means that this is a smooth function. Great. And for example, in the vertex of this other function, you cannot calculate the tangent. So this is a non-smooth uh, uh, function. This is important, and later we will see it. And also in 3D, in three dimension, this is a, a smooth function. And as you can see, also a vertex, this is a non-smooth function. Um, Many measures use the gradient of a vegan function to uh, solve the problem, and you can, uh, in most cases, this uh, gradient is not given, so you have to calculate it uh, numerically. So if you have a noisy function, this is so complicated, and you not be sure that they don't have a mistake. So uh, to optimize, we prefer the green graph, the uh, SAT function, so non-noisy function. Well, if you have something like this, it's a, a, a convex function. Uh, when the tangent in a point is completely horizontal, you could have a, a, a minimum. In this case, you only have a one point, one point and is the lowest point, so it's a global minimum. And of course, if you have a, a more than one point that have the horizontal tangent, you have, you have more than one minimum. In this case, you have the lowest uh, value for the function is the global minimum, and you have other uh, minimum that are the local minimum. This is uh, so important. And why is this important? Uh, well, uh, when you are solving this type of problem, you don't uh, actually know the value of all the points in your in your function. So it's like you are in a uh, fog-covered mountain, and you only have the information of the nearest region. So it could be possible that is the fog uh, going out, well, you, uh, uh, it could be that you are not in the global point, in the global optimum. Well, and what is a convex and non-convex function? This is a convex function. Imagine if you choose any two points in the graph um, and you trace a single line between these two points. If the graph is uh, always uh, the, down the segment, you have a convex function. If not, you have a non-convex function. Yes, easy. And also in three dimension, convex and non-convex function can be so this is an important chapter. What is a constraint? Uh, well, constraint is a function that limits your uh, search space to find a minimum. Imagine we have this function. This is uh, the control of the function. And the lowest point is uh, the black point, the global minimum. If we uh, have no any constraint, our optimum point is the black point, the global minimum. OK? So we can have different type of constraint. Uh, like this is a, a quality constraint. That means that uh, the optimum point must be inside our restrictions. So the solution for this problem is in the red uh, point. This is the optimum. And as you can see, is the clear point to the global minimum inside this restriction. You can have inequality constraints that uh, allows you to search your optimum point um, over the restriction or under the restriction. In this case, as you can say, you can uh, search your optimum point uh, over the inequality constraint. And of course, yeah, right. The optimum point is the global minimum of the function. So it's uh, fantastic. And you can have the other case. You are only allowed to search the optimum point uh, under the constraint. So your solution is this red point. And you can ask me, uh, oh, well, it's a, it's a, a little far uh, of the global minimum. Yeah, but this is your problem. And this is the better solution for this case, because you are a constraint. And this is so important. 
Of course, we do have uh, uh, more than one uh, 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 constraint. You can perform a little uh, search space to uh, find the minimum. And as you can see, the red point is another point, right? Of course, this uh, region that you found with a constraint um, should be a convex region to be sure you are in a global optimum point because if you have some like this, you uh, never could be sure you are in a global optimum. You only can assure the solution is a, a local minimum or a local maximum, but not the best solution. Uh, well, most of the figure and script from WebSN and SIP lecture. Thank you, Gael Rakos. Well, uh, attending um, to this, the optimization problem can be divided by using these ideas. If you pay attention of uh, your objective function or your retention, uh, you can uh, ask, well, it's a linear, it's a nonlinear. Um, are we have uh, decision variables? That means that you can uh, do a, a choice. For example, I only want a vegetarian menu or not. It's like one or zero. There are half my problem binary variable, yes or no. So we can have linear programming problem, mixed integral linear programming problems, uh, nonlinear programming problem, and the most difficult mixed integral nonlinear programming problems. And uh, each one of these type of problems have a main algorithm to solve it. For example, uh, we use the simplex algorithm to solve linear programming. A little story, show you a little bit. Well, an optimization uh, model can be defined mathematically as follows. This is uh, our problem, the diet problem. And as you can see, there are only letters, and it, but don't be afraid in Payomo. This is not that abstract model because we uh, put the, the coefficient and other parameters externally. And this is uh, a concrete model in Payomo where you uh, put explicitly the value of the parameters of other coefficient in the problem. So now I'm going to change. Okay. Well, uh, um, the optimization problem uh, could be solved through a solver. A solver is uh, um, the implementation of the mind algorithm, so we before. And some of these solver could be that you saw here. For linear programming, we can use GLPK, Pulp, Kawix Odd, and for example, for mixed integral nonlinear programming, we use Baron and Cplex. Uh, Cplex is fantastic. Really, really. Um, well, we can use this sol uh, this solver through an algorithm uh, uh, um, through algebraic and modeling language that sees a high-level computer language that support formulation and analysis of uh, a large uh, a mathematical problem. Some of them are Ampel, Gams, Ames, and of course Payomo. Payomo is interesting because allows the formulation of algebraic models using Python, and this is great. And it's communicated with principal servers, even uh, Neo server. And why Payomo? Well, why not Payomo? Yeah, Payomo is an open source, uh, has a server integration, and has uh, uh, several advantages. Uh, over custom, uh, like it's a robot language, has extensive uh, documentation, a rich set of standard libraries, and more. Oh, so why not Payomo? It's a good option. So for starting Payomo, we have to thank Juan Luis Cano uh, for his help building the content reserve for Payomo. Uh, Juan Luis is also in the, in the conference. Thank you, Juan Luis. <laughs> And for Stalin, you only have to type this uh, line code, and you have to install the solver separately because 
uh, they don't have implemented in the installation, but it's not a problem. If you want to install GLPK to solve LP uh, problem and mixing interval linear programming, type this. And to solve nonlinear programming, you can use EPOP, type in this other line. And you can install some extra, like a NEO server, that is the free internet based service for solving numerical optimization problem. And it's so interesting. For more information, click the link. And now I give the award, I don't know what to say, to Thuri, that is going to explain the, the problem we perform. Um, we are sorry for that much of theory, but if uh, we don't show you that, you will not understand what I'm going to show you now. So I'm now going to, I'm now going to show you the, the practical part of this. So now we're going to improve our diet. And, well, our problem is that, like he, Danny explained before, but in, we have two cases. The first case is um, we set our menu from... Uh, fast food restaurant, you want. And we want to minimize the cost, but eat the healthiest way. So we have a lot of constraints. We have to minimize our function option. And well, all that have to be the optimum solution for us. So how I did this, I actually am not good with guideline daily amounts and this stuff, but I was searching on the internet and well, I found a lot of data about the input of daily nutrients you should eat a day. What you can see here for different women, men, children, that what you should eat a day. It's a little bit, I don't know if someone does that. But well, um, using this, I have done the problem, I've solved it. First, we need to import pyoma. Um, you would say we are importing everything, but it's like um, it's convention in Pyoma, so you does this because it's like this. And then I got the data. Um, I have to say, the data it's not totally real, so everything what could be real, it's fiction. And you will say here is my data, and we have uh, I don't know if they will let me show you, but in this data. We have our menus, the costs, and then on that, I will show you later if you want, um, we set all parameters, we will be our constraint values. It means in this case, we have calories, sugar, um, proteins, and some of this stuff, and I've settled maximum minimum values I want in my diet. So solving this problem, first we need to input the model. This type of problem is a linear problem and an abstract model. So we set the sets. The sets is the data I used to get the model in. And in this case, we have the products and the nutrients with their parameters, which are data which depends on the sets I have said before. And we have cost nutrients and a maximum and minimum of each nutrient. So which, of course, we will default zero and infinite. Then we have our variables, will be in this case the number of servings, what we're going to take. Our objective function is to minimize the cost of the food, and it's the normal structure of our object function. Our constraint which is, the, I think, the most difficult part of the code because you have to look what, what you're going to do, and it's, they don't want to show you a more difficult problem like that. And well, this is very easy. We have maximum and minimum, nothing more. And solving the problem, that's what Payomo gives you as a, sol uh, as a solution. You see, you have one solution, which is great. We have a function value. It means we have minimized our cost to 369 euros. And well, he finished everything done. And the solution he does for us is this. But it's not showing my solution. I don't know why. Um, under it, um, what you don't see, um, he gives you the answer it makes. In this case, we get, you can eat one Big Mac and you have optimized your diet. 
You see, that's everything you can eat in one meal, of course, because um, you have... <laughs> but only the hamburger, you can't eat the fries. Only hamburger. <laughs> um, you have to say, here, you see, that's a normal graph of what we've called Big Mac. Um, you see, this black one is the daily amount in one meal you should eat, but this type of food has a lot of salt, a lot of fat, so, well. If you want to eat healthy, you go there and eat a Big Mac. It will be great. <laughs> now I'm going to, to show you something very different. I like this problem a lot. Because I was thinking, what can do more with the diet problem? And I was thinking, well, now we're going to do the opposite. It means how much calories I can eat in one meal for only five euros. And it was like, wow, I go there and eat a lot. So no, well, I do that. Yeah, so it was like, <laughs> let's eat. And well, we do the same. We do the import of Fireman. We get a data, which you will not find that there is a dead link, McDonald's app. I don't know what's happened. Well, and to solve that, it's an abstract model. We set our sets, or parameters. But in this time, you say it's not the nutrients we are going to set to maximum and minimum. This time is the cost, zero and five euros in this case. Our variables are the same. And our objective function now is the calories, but we want the maximum. You see, Pyome is very visual and very easy. You see there the sense. When you want to minimize, you put there minimize, and when you maximize, put maximize. It's, you don't have to do anything more. And well, our constraint now it will be on the cost and our solution we got. You see, you can eat in one meal 2,690 kilocalories for five euros. So you eat that what you should eat in one day, which I think it's respectable for five euros. And the solution is this. You should eat three hamburgers for one euro, 29, and one package of grilled onion rings, which I've never seen here. <laughs> now, I'm sorry for it, but we are chemical engineers and we love reactors and distillation coming so now you're going to see the problem we solve normally and well that's a problem or example in this case um, we solve chemical engineering chemical industry pr problems so we optimize our ways to get a pro product and to minimize our environmental impact because we deal with a lot of chemical products and something like that so to make it easy for you we have products which we can do pass with a reactor to a final product, which will be beer in this case. And then we can separate water from the alcohol with distillation and we'll get whiskey and water. But we have, can do it with two types, reactors. We have bat and continuous, which means a batch reactor. It's what you do in home. You put your water in and stop the reaction eat it and then put another boiling water on it. Continuous, it will be there how much time you want it. And distillation, the same. You have a batch reactor, which is, I think it's on a, a Simpsons capital. The, yeah, they explode the thing. But you can do it in, a, in short times or in long time for continuous. And well, that's not what I'm going to show you. We have this superstructure. We, we have A, we want to get it to B and then to C. And we have two ways to get it. We have a reactor, we have a lot of distillation columns. And well, we get Payamu to, to say us what we can do with the minimum environmental impact. And well, we have a lot of reactions. Is everyone is interested in, you can read them all, but. I don't think you'd want that. Uh, here we have an uh, interesting fact. We have disjunctions. This is the first time you will see them. Disjunctions, you have to imagine it as like two situations. We have situation one, which is 
When we have situation one, the cost and every product will be this data. But if this situation is not going to happen, we have the other. It means everything is zero, so this part is not existing anymore. And that's the hardest part to deal with it on Payamo, which everyone is, if everyone's interested, you can come to me outside and I will explain you how to do it. So now we are going to introduce binary variables, which is everyone I think knows what a binary variable is. The one or zero, well, it exists or it don't exist. So optimizing or finding objection, you see this time it's not a lovely linear problem. This time we have a real expression with everything mapped stuff. And now I'm going to show you the results because the code is very, very long. These are the results, what we should do. So you say, Payama, you can use it for everything, to go to McDonald's or to make your own reactor at home and settle, I don't know, whiskey, beer, what you want. So you can use everything of this for your own choice. And last but not least, I have to say it. Um, I mean, I said before, because we are part, both part of CATEME, which is a non-profit organization from the University of Alicante, which encouraged chemical engineers to use programming because we actually don't learn to program in our studies. And, well, we have to thank, if you want to say this, the homepage. And we have to thank a lot to our teachers, Fran Navarro and Ruben Ruiz Femenia, which have helped us to do this. And I hope you enjoyed the speak. <laughs> Hi, um, I wanted to know if you know what are the methods for optimization that are used inside Piomo or any of the tools that you are calling from it. Like, is it uh, iterative? Is it iterative way? Is it a Newtonian? Is it a con uh, conjugate gradient? What kind of method of optimization is done to arrive to the minimum? It's um, normally it's an iterative way. So he tries every thing and he wants to choose how the solution will fit everything but normally you have seen a very simple problem but the before I showed you you have I think 29 equations you have to optimize it because the solution needs to fit every of them so um, sometimes it will be a good solution what you get but sometimes not so you have to play a little bit with that we normally use GAMS, and you will see the code is on there too, that they give very similar, but not the same solution for you to the same problem, because every solver had his own stuff. I don't know if that's the answer, answer to your question. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, it's okay. I, I can shout. <laughs> <laughs> they won't be recorded. Thank you very much for the talk with the optimization of calories for five euros. Did you have any constraints as in non-toxic level of salt or fat? <laughs> so can you survive those calories or it's just um, do you have no constraints? Um, I was looking at that and I, I seen on the internet that you should eat two grams of, of salt a day, which is every of us, I think, eats a lot more. And I was looking at it, and if you, I think if you eat that much of calories and of salt a day, maybe you go to the hospital on the next. So it will be, I don't think you can eat that much for, for one meal. It will be too much for you to get that. Three hamburgers and one... No, the there are the, the 2,600 calories, I mean. Yeah, the problem is no, the food had a lot of salt and sugar, and that's too much you should have in your body, so you will have problems later, maybe. I don't know, if maybe not. You, you should try it. <laughs> you should try it. For science. <laughs> For science. Please, please send me a message if you have tried, if you're okay. <laughs> uh, 
Hi, thank you for the talk. I have a question. Why can't you drink this water? It's whiskey water, basically. Drink and drive, you know. Why? The, the, there is water waste. Don't drink that. It's water. It's whiskey water, right? I would, um, I would buy it. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, that's, well, that's... Um, thank you, just Gordon, this afternoon. Um, that's um, because that you have to study a little bit of, about the distillation. Um, you have a lot of types of different alcohol types in, in, in whiskey. And you have to see, um, there are some types you can get blind from it. So that's what you are extracting and that's in the water. So maybe if you... Yeah, it's, it's water. <laughs> There may be some molecules of water in it. <laughs> uh, normally, um, everything what we got in the chemical engineering production, you don't shoot, eat it, or taste it. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I don't recommend you drink that. <laughs> so does that mean if you mix wastewater with whiskey, then you get beer out of it? No, no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it will be great, it will be great. <laughs> Okay, my actual question. <laughs> my actual question um, is: it uh, is it possible to have uh, the two objectives? I think you implemented now the nutrition constraints as constraints. Yeah. But can there be two objectives uh, which are somehow weighted that you can say, well, that you can compromise between? A nutritional value and uh, and yeah. money spent. So it's it's fine if the nutrition value is not quite as high if you save two euro or something like that. Well, uh, yes, you can perform a multi-objective uh, uh, exercise, but not using this technique. Uh, for example, if you are interested in optimizing the the cost and the medimental care. There are two objectives uh, that are different, so you have to use uh, uh, Pareto on other techniques, no using these, uh, these techniques. But yes, you could do it, but using other, other things. This is only for one objective function. Yeah, you can do it. Yeah. <laughs> if, if you want later, we can talk about it. What you can do will be easier if you want to do it this this like this. You can um, transform one of the function objections in a constraint. Yeah. So if this satisfied, you have two function options. You only have to do what are you dealing with. It's do you know what you're doing? What normally we don't know. So. The, the speech should be for 45 minutes, but I was a little bit fast, so I'm sorry for that. No worry. A any more questions? No? So we can have our free meal. And thanks for coming. Thanks for our speakers.